Well, neither the Czech Republic or Italy have been too convincing in this championship so far, with just one win apiece in their three group games. Italy, though, are unbeaten and will hope to be able to stifle a Czech side that is woefully short on goals. Well, the Czech side has no fewer than five full internationals, including goalkeeper Peter Czech, the most experienced is Milan Baros of Liverpool, who scored in four of his ten full internationals. Six of the side play for the Prague club Sparta and Slavia. Defender Martin Jirinek plays for an Italian side in Regina and has scored the Czech's only goal from open play in the championship. Four of the Italian side play for Parma, including the exciting striker Emiliano Bonazzoli. He again partners the much sought after Massimo Macaroni. The Empoli striker has scored nine goals in 14 under-21 internationals, including two against England in the group stage. Another who will catch the eye is their playmaker, Andre Perlo. A referee today comes from Germany, Franz Saber Wack, and hopefully is not a wacky referee. So the Czech team will be looking to Baros to score them the goals that they need. Has played in full internationals against the likes of Northern Ireland, Malta and Bulgaria, but was sent off in a qualifier in the World Cup against Belgium. And there's Perlo, who is Rui Costa's replacement at Milan after the Portuguese midfielder was injured during the last Serie A campaign. This then a repeat of the final two years ago when Italy beat the Czech Republic. These two sides remain, though, very strong at under-21 level. One of these sides will be going through to the final to play against France. Which will it be? So right from the off, it's the Czech team who get a free kick. Kovilic, who is more than likely be the player who will take the free kick from that far side. Whip it in with the right boot. So immediately a test then of the Italian defence in the first minute of the game. Kobilic of Sigma Alumau to take it. Keeper only punches it out. And the header has gone in. And the Czech Republic in the first minute has scored. Rosenau, the scorer for the Czech Republic, presented with an open goal after a mistake by Berizzoli, who remains on the ground injured. He just punched it straight to the Czech Republic player colliding with his own player and despite the attentions of two defenders on the line they still couldn't keep the header out and what a magnificent start it is for the Czech Republic Rosenau then with his first goal in the tournament and I'm sure that he didn't expect the ball to be in the back of the net as early as the first minute of the match Free kick was given away after just eight seconds. First attacking move of the game, and the Czech Republic have scored. Just the ideal start, unless, of course, you're an Italian player. Well, this is not good news with Lucini having to go off for treatment. Blasi playing it out to the wing. That's Cannavaro. And the Czech Republic looking for more goals. Really in the mood now, aren't they? Fine run by Vatusek. He's looked a decent player in this championship already. Got the vital away goal in the playoffs against Croatia that saw the Czech Republic through. And there he was, going for goal once more. The tan in defence looking at sixes and sevens. Paolo Cannavaro is playing now on the right side of defence. Bonazzoli playing it back. Held on by Perlo. Castellini. And he's got support here. Macaroni was waiting in the centre. Czech defence did its job problem has been for the Czech Republic all through this tournament in scoring goals not in this game didn't score in the opening game which was a 2-0 defeat by France they built beat Belgium by one goal to nil you're an Ekby scorer 
And then they drew with Greece, one all with Rigera, the scorer from the penalty spot. Marcioni. Blasi intervening. Doing well to keep possession for Italy. Cannavaro. Drahi. Looking around for options. Perdo takes over. Still Perlo keeping the play moving. Excellent. This is the Czech Republic who are looking very strong at the moment with Zelenka playing the ball out of the wing. Not allowing Italy too much room and it gets to the last third of the field. They're defending well and now they're attacking well through Baros. Nice turn by Zelenka. Shot was deflected harmlessly away though and now Macaroni being the subject of plenty of transfer speculation linking him to moves to the likes of Birmingham which is already rejected and Middlesbrough the latest club to come in for him it certainly seems as if he will not be playing for Empoli next season here's Perlo spreading the play well Bonazzoli with a return pass to Polo great build-up play Macaroni goes down there's no penalty Macaroni's looked a very fine player though already in these championships and here he is threatening score from that sort of position against England in one of the group games scored two goals in that game Macaroni is being fouled Free kick given against the goal scorer for the Czech Republic, Rosenal. Scored one league goal last season. Now some more defending to be done, and indeed he gets the ball away for the corner. Having a busy time. Only played in one qualifying game. That was one of the playoff games against Croatia. So a late developer. Oh, off the line, and that's why the man was there on that far post from the corner. Curled in again by Lucini. No problems this time, though, for the Czech defence. Lucini plays for Tanana in Serie B. He's off the knee, but Hubschman doing the business for the Czech Republic in that position. Aros. Speculative shot. Comfortably into the arms of Pedizoli. Played in five games for Roma last season in Serie A. Kept three clean sheets. Also played in a couple of Champions League games against Real Madrid and Anderlecht. Must be considered, though, slightly a fault for the goal. Opting to punch the ball away rather than catch it. And when he collided with his own player, it certainly meant that there was no distance to the punch. Vorisek playing it forward. Nice turn by Zelenka out of trouble. He's got Barros with him. Zelenka might not need him. Great ball to the far side. That should be the second goal, but it isn't because of a fine save by Pelizzoli. The defence had really gone to sleep. No one watching the... Run on the far side as the yellow card is brandished. As the play was spread, nobody marking the man who eventually got the shot in. 
Excellent work by Zelenka again, who's looked a really good player. And Vatusek forcing the save. Perhaps should have done better. That's a lovely flick. Again, they're getting behind the defence. Cannavaro forced into the tackle. Confirmation of a yellow card then for Bonazzoli. Third Italian player to go into the referee's book already in this game. Well, it's clashed there, which is quite nasty, between Lucini and Barros. And the referee, I believe, is going to give Barros a yellow card. And that will be highly significant to Barros. It means he will miss the final should the Czech Republic reach that match against France. So, disappointment then for Barros. Czech Republic breaking out through Hubschman. Away by Cannavaro. Well, just as the half peters out, you can see that there are a few battles on that field. Referee. Eventually brings the half to an end then. One that got off to a cracking start with Rosenhull getting the ball in the net after about 30 seconds of play. After the free kick was punched away by the goalkeeper, they remain in command of the game because at half time, the score is Italy nil, the Czech Republic won. So Italy to get the second half underway, still trailing by that goal from Rosenhal, scored after just one minute of the game. An extraordinary start for the Czech Republic. But they've looked good value. They've had other chances as well. Palazzoli has definitely been the busier of the goalkeepers. Referee just getting in the way there, but it didn't stop the momentum of the move with Hubschman still getting the ball forward for the Czech Republic, but rather lost their way there. Possession one bag by Lucini. Away by the goal scorer, Rosenhal. Oh, they've continued the move beautifully, but Chusek playing the ball downfield. And inside by Skasel, and they're threatening once more. Off the crossbar from Barros. How important will that miss be? Well, the Liverpool striker got himself into a fabulous position and had the chance to really bury Italian hopes and to repeat what the Czech Republic had achieved in the first half, a goal almost right from the kickoff. Italy survive. Perlo unable to keep the ball in. Well, they need to get Bonazzoli and Macaroni into the game more, but Barros did excellently to get into that position. Well, the ball almost hit the underside of the bar. How it didn't go in, I don't know. Cannavaro is coming in. Keeper had already committed himself. Hubschman. Played in the World Youth Championships in Argentina. In fact, he was the captain of the Czech team. Still, it's the Czech Republic dictating the play, forward by Grigera. 
away by Cannavaro. Alone at Verona last season, 24 appearances and scored one goal. Kobilic, who created, in a sense, the first goal. It was his free kick, which was punched away by Perizzoli. And here he is now with the corner for the Czech Republic. Driven very far wide. So in the end, comfortable for Perizzoli. Cost Roma a significant sum of money. Over $20 million, plus a player in exchange when he moved from Atalanta to Roma. Bazi getting the ball inside. Vahi, now it's Marcioni. Loves to run at defenders. Keeps them guessing. That should be the goalkeeper's ball when he chose to punch it instead of catching it, which seemed to be the easier option. We haven't seen too much of Peter Scheck, Sparta Prague goalkeeper, although there's a suggestion that he might be on his way because Sparta Prague want to sign the veteran goalkeeper Peter Kuba. given away and you can't afford to give the ball to Zelenka although that particular pass was a little bit more wayward <laughs> Italy have dominated the under 21 championships the last five times the championship has been held they've won it four times Form hasn't been so outstanding in this championship. They remain unbeaten. They drew against Portugal in their opening game. They beat England and then drew 0-0 against Switzerland. And they're looking for the equaliser here. Macaroni! And the follow-up shot went wide after a good save initially by Shek. Polo following up after Macaroni had swiveled and shot and put plenty of power in his effort. Polo was off balance as the ball came to him. Only had an instant to react. There's Kobilik. Been with Sigma Lumau since he was a very young boy. Actually signed for them in 1987 when he was seven years of age. Referee has quietly gone about his business. Forcing Perlo and Brahi to come further back. To be taken by Skaysel. No real problems that time for the Italian goalkeeper. Well, the Czech Republic making it very difficult for Italy. Certainly, Zelenka as playmaker has had a very good game for the Czech Republic as the ball is laid off by Kobilik. Zelenka once more. Still, he keeps going, finding Skacel. He goes for a very ambitious shot. Long way out. That is only forced to just push it away. Skacel scored in the 8 0 qualifying win against Bulgaria. Good save, actually. 
here better from this angle I'd imagine as the ball was curling away all the time still not away Hubschman sending the ball to the far side oh problems actually there for the Italian defense although one of the Czech Republic players had crept offside Jirinek who put himself into a good position in the game against Belgium where he scored the winner only half punched away no chance for Marcioni initially but Cannavaro now joining the attack Marcioni once more good delivery firm header away by Vorisek by, by Kobilic Hubschman Czech Republic ball still in control of this game their coach Miroslav Beranek will be I imagine very pleased with this performance it's interesting that they've struggled to score too many goals in this championship up until now and yet they were scoring goals so freely in the qualifiers of course, it culminated in that 8-0 victory against Bulgaria, a team they'd lost to in their opening qualifier. But they also scored four against Denmark and Northern Ireland. Three against Denmark in the home fixture. And at home to Malta, plenty of goals. And they didn't concede too many apart from three against Denmark in a 4-3 victory, but at least they came out winners in that game. Lovely ball inside, Marcioni now. Try to return the compliment to Bonazzoli. He's had a quiet game by his standards. Perlo. Bonazzoli into the side netting. Five league goals in Syria last season for Palmer. Eight in 18 under 21 internationals, but he hasn't added to that mark today. Cost Palmer $10 million. And he signed from Brescia. Macaroni battling hard. This is a good build-up. Marcioni now cuts it back. Open goal. No goal. You'd expect Perlo to do better in that position. Terrific build-up play by Italy. At the very least, he had to get the shot on target. The goalkeeper had committed himself. But Perlo unable to keep the shot down and that surprising lack of technique for a, a very very highly rated player Bonazzoli was tripped got a sec the man who was penalized Attempting to go for the ball, but getting the feet instead. Cannavaro. Pinzi, the substitute. Cannavaro once more. Challenge was unfair from Hubschman on Perlo. So this is a good opportunity then for Italy. Still trading from that goal in the opening seconds of the game. Perlo flicks it in. Well, the header was directed towards the goal, but lacking any power whatsoever from Lucini. To be fair, he was moving away from the goal at the time but really didn't get the connection he wanted. Oh, 
Well, the Czech Republic have been forced to do more defending as the second half has worn on. Barros shows his strength, and again, taking the ball towards the corner. And he's won a free kick for his team. So a good opportunity then for the Czech Republic to put some real distance between themselves and Italy. Second goal now could be the defining moment of the game. They are good from set pieces. They've already shown that in this game. Once again, Rosenhal has come forward. And we know what he achieved earlier. Oh, there was a bit of a foul on the far side and the whistle went very early despite the fact the ball was dispatched into the back of the net by Pospisil, it won't count. Just did a bit of yanking then. Managed to keep his balance before dispatching the ball in the back of the net. And he receives a yellow card. Came on as a substitute for Vatrusek. That was his first real chance to shine. And apart from the tug on the defender, he did pretty well. Barros looking very mobile once again. Bit of a wayward ball by Pospisil. Lazi out to the wing. Here's Pinzi of Udinese. Dispossessed by Pospisil. It's that old saying about defending starting with the strikers and Pospisil getting involved again for the second time. Partially headed away by Cannavaro. Out to the wing. Skesel. Oh, it's in! Hospizil this time does score. It's the second goal for the Czech Republic. And it comes just seven minutes from the end. And you'd think that would be enough to send the Czech Republic into the final. Didn't he take it well? Got in front of the defender, and found the corner of the net. Could be a very important goal for the Czech Republic. And revenge, perhaps, might be on the cards after their defeat in the last final against Italy. It's a long way back from this position for Italy. The substitute, though, has done the trick. The Czech Republic two goals up. What can Italy do now? Surely they're really going to really throw caution to the wind. They've got nothing more to lose. So Perlo will take the free kick. Comes back now, Perlo once more. Whipped across by Pinzi. Czech Republic on the counter-attack can be a very dangerous team, so that's something which Italy got to watch out for. Here's Perlo. Again, the Czech Republic looking to break out quickly. Given possession away, though. Pinzi winning the corner for his team. It's all or nothing now for Italy. Czech Republic getting closer all the while to a place in the final. It'll be taken by Perlo. And 
Never really hit top form in this championship as Pinzi drives the ball across. Away by Polak. Castellini getting a touch, and now Blasi taking over for Italy. All they're doing is finding Czech Republic players, and Barros has done really well in holding the ball up. And now might go for goal. Barros, perhaps he should have gone for goal. He's given the ball away in a sense. Been dispossessed in Italy now. Got to find some magic from somewhere as Paolo drives the ball across. Macaroni now, he's been very quiet in the game. Goes down. Is that a penalty? Well, Macaroni, who'd gone very quiet, goes down in the area. And Italy have the chance from the penalty spot through Perlo, who missed a sitter earlier on in the second half. How Italy need this to go in, with time fast running out. Oh, yes, the keeper went one way, Perlo read it and just chipped the ball into the other corner. Italy have still got a lifeline. Four minutes remaining, Perlo makes it 2-1. Quite a few Italian fans in the stadium. Already saw that the keeper was moving one way, so he went the other. So, Perlo. 16 goals now in 38 appearances at under-21 level. Uh, Quinta is on for Italy. They've brought on an extra striker. Taken off a midfielder. And the Czech Republic wasting time. Confirmation of the scoreline. Skacel receiving the yellow card. Bonazzoli challenging. Free kick goes against Italy. Tensions running very high now. Czech Republic seemed to be cruising when they were leading 2-0 with seven minutes left. It's not looking quite so comfortable now, although they've got the ball in the right area of the field as far as they're concerned. Skacel getting the ball inside. Might still be a chance to extend the lead. And now, everyone charging forward for Italy. Can they ask any more questions of the Czech Republic defence? Keeper won't be in too much of a hurry to release the ball. He used all the time that was allowed to him. Ospazil, who scored the second goal, just getting a touch on it. And it's sent further forward by Zurek. Now the break might be on. Perlo, who scored from the penalty spot. Skacel, who received a yellow card. Just a few minutes earlier, just had to watch himself. Can Perlo create anything from the free kick? Italy need a goal to send the game into extra time. Here's Macaroni. Macaroni! Oh, he's done it! Italy have come back from the dead. Massimo Macaroni. A goal he created all himself. He got a bit of fortune from the 
post, but frankly, he deserved it. Excellent goal by Macaroni to add to the two he scored against England. And time was almost up. The fourth minute of stoppage time. And Massimo Macaroni levels the scores. Italy have come back from two down in the dying seconds of the game. And they'll send the game into golden goal extra time. Unless there's to be another twist before the final whistle goes. Surely that can't happen now. Can they find a winner? That really would be dramatic. And it's a free kick. Given against Jirinek. Czech Republic suddenly must be wondering what on earth is happening. Victory within sight. And now they're hanging on. Oh, what a fight back this has been by Italy, and they could cap it all if they converted this free kick to book their own place in the final. Good defensive header away, the follow-up shot comfortably taken by the keeper. Well, the Czech Republic did have chances to confirm their victory. They didn't take them, and so... We have a dramatic twist. Italy fighting back to make it two all and to take the, the game into extra time. So we're ready then for extra time. There can be no further changes to the personnel because each side has used all of its substitutions so it's the players that finished the, I was going to say 90 minutes, but finished the period of normal time that we'll have to see out extra time. Remember, this is golden goals. The first team to score goes through to the final to play France. The Czech Republic having led by two goals to nil, pegged back by Italy, thanks to Perlo and Macaroni. Will now the whole emphasis of the game have changed? Will it now be Italy on the ascendancy? Certainly the Czech Republic have got it all to do after conceding those two goals. The momentum surely must have swung away from them. They've got to really regroup. It'll be a real test of the skills of Miroslav Berenek as to whether he can motivate his team and get them back on track. Comes off the Italian defender after Zurich's run. Zurich, who plays for Banneke Strava. Five goals in 13 under-21 caps, having scored on his under-21 debut. They'd love to have another goal from him, then. Throw to be taken by Lucini. Macaroni winning the free kick. Macaroni, the hero. Having scored, of course, that equalising goal in the dying seconds, almost the last kick of the game. Czech Republic sweeping forward. Vorisek playing it down the wing, but it'll be an Italian ball. Quite an advanced position that for Grai Jerry. He wasn't moving that far forward in the regular time. was one of the problems when you have to gear your team for a fight back you can sometimes lose the shape of your team because of the personnel you got on the field that's one of the problems for Italy perhaps now players are being forced into positions they don't normally play in Bonazzoni certainly seems to have gone a bit deeper Quinta with a layoff 
Castellini playing it in. Golden goal rule applies. First goal. We'll see their team through. If there are no goals, we will have a penalty shootout. Given away. Ospazil. Scored the second goal for the Czech Republic after coming on as a substitute. There's Rudolf Skesel. Scored on his debut against Bulgaria. Playing in his ninth under-21 international now, Skesel, and he'll take the throw. An Italian free kick. A lot of debate, actually, in football circles now about the merits of golden goals, and certainly UEFA now are backtracking on their worth, believing now that perhaps it leads to negative play because teams are too concerned about conceding one goal. Planning to revert back to the traditional old extra time of two periods of 15 minutes. Pospisil's made a good run into the area. Here's Pospisil! Czech Republic are in the final. A second goal for Pospisil. The substitute sends his team into the final. Poor covering work by Italy. After Zurek had made the run, and in the end, a comfortable finish for the substitute. And that is enough to send the Czech Republic into the final and to exact revenge on Italy, who had beaten them in the last final. So the Czech Republic go through with the final score of the Czech Republic 3, Italy 2.